Hey guys, what's up? Another exciting day in the life of me coming right up. So, today, after my usual morning, I am headed to Atlanta to work for a little while with the Atlanta Pipe Band, so super stoked about that. And uh, so let's get on with my day and see what goes on today. So we have a couple more Dojo U crew signups as of yesterday. I think we got three signups yesterday. Super awesome. All right, let's hear what John's got. I agree, it was really well controlled really good rhythmic accuracy there except for a couple spots where there was a lapse and we kind of came in early and we had a few like there's a few consequences as the result every now and then like a little grace note synchronization error or something a little bit smudgy but yeah overall on average really good rhythmic control there for sure i think people are obsessed with what they need to do to be able to tune their pipes. And instead, just be obsessed with the idea that you could always tune your pipes a little bit better than you're currently tuning them. I've worked with the Atlanta Pipe Band before and I really like working with them. And in my mind, they're a really great band because they understand one of the key things that I think you need to understand in order to build a great band, which is, it's not the super complicated stuff that's holding you back. It's actually the super simple stuff. Okay, here I am at Albany International Airport uh, in the process of flying to Atlanta. I'm not used to actually parking in this lot. I usually park in a long-term lot, but I'm only gone for one night. So uh, let's see if I can find my way to the terminal. Checked in, getting a bite to eat. All right, that wasn't the healthiest lunch, but it should help me fall asleep while I do two hours in the middle seat. One of the things that you're gonna see on score sheets all the time is that there's tuning issues that are coming through, right? Like the Fs are out of tune or the Ds are bad. Um, and that sort of thing definitely comes out of a band oftentimes in a performance. But if you go back to band practice and all you work on is tuning, you're never going to solve that issue. And why is that? Well, that's because 98% of all tuning problems in pipe bands have nothing to do with the band's ability to tune each other up, right? What it's really about is that individuals in the band are not able to control their instruments and blow steadily. Um, and they don't have that super solid intonation that each individual is going to need in order to tune up the band really well. So. When you're at band practice, you should be focusing on teaching people how to blow solid, teaching people how to blow solid, and not so much uh, just practicing tuning all the time. Atlanta. It is hot and nice and warm here. On the playing side of things, you'll see stuff on score sheets all the time like light and shade isn't very good or, or needs more downbeat pulse in the stress bay. And what people do is they go back to band practice and they talk about more downbeat pulse on the stress bay. And they talk about trying to achieve phrasing, light and shade, and all sorts of interesting things. But the bottom line is players, individuals in the band, the reason that light and shade is an issue 
is because players lack rhythmic control on an individual level. Do you have a vlog? Yeah, I have a vlog. Where have you been? So if a player has trouble hitting a downbeat with accuracy every single time, then of course that player is gonna have trouble constructing well-balanced phrases when they play. You see what I mean? And so, when a band focuses on the basic, simple things, even though they're kind of boring and repetitive and frustrating to work on, that's the sort of attitude that's going to lend itself to real improvement, right? And if you can expand that idea across a whole band, that's the kind of attitude that's going to lead to a successful band. Master the simple fundamentals, okay? And the rest of it, all of that complicated, fancy stuff, is going to come naturally to a group like that over time. I think, those are, I think that's a really good goal and it's kind of measurable as well. Right. I mean, they are the you know the world standard right now. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. The absolutely. Top, top of the grade for us. That's right. So. So that's the benchmark I want to hold our band accountable. Yeah. Absolutely, to. man. What is required? What is the gap between where you are and where you're trying to be? Consistency is one big thing. No, no mistake. What does consistency mean? Consistency <clears throat> is, for example. We can achieve and set up what I feel like is very high standard tone, but we can't completely maintain it all the time because of fluctuations of individuals in the circle. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you can go in and it's all really nice <coughs> and you get that moment of second guessing and then it kind of has the ripple effect, you know, around the circle. Yeah. And then it'll come back at times, but it's like, it's not just that, you know, excellent, tone which has been achieved the whole way through yeah yeah that's right the, the the issue is the individual the individual's ability to uh to sustain the basic fundamentals from right. the beginning to the end of a performance the same goes with note mistakes right i'm sure like uh i'm sure the band can get from the beginning to the end of a medley right the individuals constituents in the group are the ones that are having trouble getting from beginning to end without any notes. Well, and, and that's have you been filming this whole time? Perfect. You can just stop it right there. Mm -hmm.